Welcome back to DJ React, where music sparks conversation every day. In today's conversation, we're gonna meet the first North Korean K pop idol. That should be interesting. North I would have Korean? never thought K pop idols would come out of North Korea. How? how They're so strict over there, and they don't allow internet access for things to get out, so how does that work? I don't know. I don't even know how they allowed this person to get out to be able to be a K-pop idol. <laughs> maybe know. escaped or something. Yeah, because yeah. family escaped. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But we are about to find out, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in. Let's do it. Many idols have broken and redefined barriers in the past, and yet these two trainees are going to make history very soon. From being North Korean defectors to debuting in the K-pop industry, here are the stories of the SB Boys members Sok and Hyuk. North Korea isn't known for being exactly a liberal country. In fact, it has kept itself cut off from the world for a while. They've been known to strictly control what comes in and out and keep their citizens from having access to foreign things like movies or books. Those caught with foreign stuff can face serious punishment. Sometimes even have their lives taken according to Bro, the North Korea is insane because they don't just hurt you or like imprison you they imprison your whole family uh, your whole bloodline. and your whole entire bloodline if yep. you fuck up if you do one thing wrong over yeah. there like they just take out your whole lineage, everything <laughs> just gone. That's insane, dude. Mm -hmm. Like when I heard that, I was like, holy shit, bro. No wonder why these people are like terrified to try to escape. Oh yeah. Cause then they're like, you're not just killing, like, uh, like I'm it's okay if, if I die to try no, to it's escape. it's everybody you know. But I'm gonna ruin everybody else's lives. Mm -hmm defectors who left North Korea. In the last 10 years, a human rights report shows that at least seven people lost their lives for sharing K-pop videos from South Korea. Considering that the leader of the country, Kim Jong-un, calls South Korean entertainment a vicious disease, you can't be surprised at how intolerant they are of K-pop. However, it's not like attempts haven't been made to improve the relations between the two countries through the power of music. Back in March 2018, more than 150 artists, including Red Velvet, Cho Young-pil, and Lee Sun-hee, made a trip across the border to perform for Kim Jong-un and North Korean citizens. Oh, but not. even though this happened, it was still unthinkable for any North Korean to debut in a K-pop group. Well, until now, as SB Boys is about to hit the stage with two North Korean members in their lineup. But let's talk a bit about the group first. SB Boys is a tentative name for a boy group debuting under a new independent company called The Singing Beetle. What's really impressive about the group is that they're being created by Michelle Cho, who is also the CEO of the company. Fans of SM Entertainment artists may be familiar with with her as she's written songs for Beck Hyun, Kai, Seventeen, Queendom Puzzle, and many more. Based on this, people expect that the music of the new group will be good. Even though we don't know any details of their debut, not even the date of their first release, what we do know is that the company has three trainees that will probably debut in the group. Sock, Hyuk, and Kenny. Two other members will be added later on as the group plans to make a U.S. debut next year. It's possible that they're debuting in the U.S. due to the possible backlash they might face if they were to debut in South Korea. Now, let's talk about the members. Kenny may be already known to some people as he was a contestant in the survival show Asia Super Young, but the focus has been on the other two members. Yu Hyuk, the rapper of the group, was born in March 2000 in Gyeongsang, a place in North Korea located along the eastern coast. As you might have guessed, his life hasn't been easy since his early childhood, as his parents divorced when he was only three years old and started living separately. His mom went to South Korea while his dad used up all their money on alcohol and bribing officials to avoid working, which is legally required for all able-bodied citizens of North Korea. These circumstances put a seven-year-old Hyuk into a tight spot as he had noticed that his family wasn't having a good time financially. This became even more apparent to him when he had witnessed his grandmother trying to pick up grains of rice from the floor of the train station. So he had tried to help in any way Damn. he could, which is absolutely heartbreaking considering that he was only a child back then. Seeing as he couldn't work, he resold stolen cement for cash and sometimes resorted to begging for money. He had a bit of help from some soldiers who would give him food or supplies as they recognized him, but things weren't good for his family either way. Hyuk said, We were essentially beggars who happened to have nothing else but a house. Thankfully, his mother ended up coming through, asking for him to join her in South Korea. But since she had left him alone with his father, begging in the street for money, they weren't exactly close, so it's no wonder he refused. His mom kept at it, talking to his dad and promising to send money every month if their son agreed to leave. And that's exactly what he did. He told his 12-year-old son to pursue a better life in South Korea while he would stay in the North and try to improve his life there. This worked, and Hugh so was convinced to start his not so. One of your parents lives over in South Korea. That's the only like middle ground that you have to move over there. Other than that, if you don't have anybody over in another country, they won't let you out. 
I guess that's how it works. God, how terrible. Know. I thought once you were there, that's it. You're in. There's no way out. That's what I thought, too. But maybe there's some hmm. new hmm. rules or something that's that awesome. I don't know about. Easy journey to the south. Hugh's trip to the south took six months, and he had to cross through three countries to reach his destination. So when he finally arrived in Seoul, he had already turned 13 years old. To adjust to his new life in a whole other country, Hugh was made to go through a program designed for North Korean defectors. He also enrolled in a free boarding school, which had other escapees as students. But instead of finding comfort in that, he still felt like he didn't belong. Because he still considered himself distant from his mother, Hugh took a part-time job to earn some money, as he didn't want to financially depend on her. His life there had been pretty hard already, but in his second year of living in the South, it got worse as his father passed away from a liver disease. This made Hyuk feel even lonelier. Yeah. He didn't have a lot of friends. He was having a hard time adjusting to a life in a whole different country, and now he didn't even have a father. He also didn't care much for school, but he enjoyed studying Korean and poetry. Seeing his interest, his high school teacher had suggested that he try writing rap lyrics, even though he didn't have any knowledge of that music style. So he ended up doing his research and found some rappers on YouTube more particularly, he had watched Show Me the Money, where he had seen rappers expressing their struggles through music. As Hugh attempted to express his feelings through rap music, life kept throwing other challenges his way. He dropped out of arts college and ended up in a lot of debt due to a scam, which forced him to work at a Samsung semiconductor factory. Thankfully, his life got a lot better from then on. He met Michelle Cho through a mutual acquaintance and gave her a song that he had written himself. She was so impressed that she offered him free rap lessons, leading him to quit his job so he could focus on music. All he had wanted was to reach the point that his friends and family in North Korea would see him and know that he's Bro, doing well. I, I love stories like this. I know, it's like, amazing. To where it's just like, you escape from something crazy, and then you just, boom, hit the ground mm -hmm. floor. Yeah. You're just, tr like, bottom of the barrel. Trash, like, and then all of a sudden, you just, one little tiny connection, and start him. Yeah. Yep. Off to the awesome. stars. He couldn't reach that through acting, but he's hoping to reach that goal by being an idol. Hyuk said, At the end of the day, there isn't a single person who hasn't had hardships. I hope to move the world with our music. He also expressed his desire to connect with others who've gone through tough times like him. Hyuk mentioned that he really wanted to show that even North Koreans can dream big, so he hopes to inspire other marginalized individuals to also have big dreams while living their lives. While life in North Korea can't be easy by default, Kim Sok's life was much easier than that of his bandmate. Sok moved to South Korea when he was 19 years old, but had already been pretty familiar with K-pop at that point. He had a decent life and had managed to listen to some sneaked-in K-pop songs and music videos. He was amazed that the artists there could write lyrics and sing about the beauty of love and relationships, which was pretty different from North Korean music, which aims to teach certain ideas. He expressed his goals as an idol, saying, I'd like to make music that can move people's hearts from the first verse. It isn't known how he escaped his home country or how he got in touch with Michelle Cho, but we're assuming that the wall Street Journal article we took our information from was vague on purpose so they could protect the boys. These stories are just as devastating to hear as they are heartwarming. Knowing just what they went through and how persistent they are to be successful in the industry, we know that we're about to witness a legendary debut and hopefully their long careers. The SB boys are currently being faced with a very busy schedule filled with dance classes, rap and singing lessons, daily English tests, and even a course about global citizenship that helps them understand different cultures. Well, Singing Beatles is certainly doing something right, something that other, bigger companies never bothered doing, and that's educating idols on cultural differences. The two had even had their first performance at a multicultural festival in Seoul, with only a few people watching. They did a cover of a South Korean hip-hop song, but had changed a few words to give the performance their own original twist. They finished with an energetic dance to BTS's hit song, Idol, and by the end, their audience had grown to about 50 people. Small steps, but considering their circumstances, a win is a win. It's also very apparent that the boys are set in succeeding, to the point that they're criticizing themselves in order to get better. After they had gone backstage, Hugh expressed that he could have controlled the stage better and engaged with the audience more, rating his performance a 6 out of 10. But despite the hardships to get there, looking back on his past, Hugh has shared that he feels much happier and more normal now. As much as we're excited to see their debut, we should also think of the risks that these boys face just by being North Korean, ignoring the likely harassment they might face from South Korean internet users 
users due to their nationality, along with significant scrutiny, we cannot ignore the fact that simply being in public and openly sharing their journey is dangerous. If one of them still has family in North Korea, it's understandable to worry about the safety of their relatives, especially considering how openly they discussed their past experiences in their home country. Either way, they've decided to take these risky steps despite knowing the consequences, so all we can do is support them when they eventually debut and wish them all the best. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next That's time. That's awesome, dude. I hope Many the best for those guys, man, yeah. especially coming from where they came from. I bet you they're going to work their asses off. Oh, too. definitely. I mean, you can see how critical they are of themselves already just from that little performance. They only had 50 people, but they want to, like, do better, you know, because they said, what, he rated himself a 6 out of a 10? 6 out of a 10. Yeah, yeah. so obviously they're going to keep pushing to hit the 10 and above and just keep going for the stars, like you said before. It's good they, like, self-analyze like that, yeah. you know, they, they look deep into themselves and kind of reevaluate yeah. everything that happened and try to uh, build upon it. Well, like they said, they kind of want to be a voice, I guess, for their people, because obviously their people being there can't speak out, they can't say anything, so hopefully through them, they'll be able to, you know, get the message out to the rest of the world and who knows, maybe sometime the world can come together and help those people over there. He just has to watch out for uh, for Kim Jong-un inviting him over there to, to perform. Yeah, keep like, there. Come on back, brother. Yeah, come, come on. Come give me a nice show. Come give us a show. Yeah, you're and not going home. You're done. <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen. No, I hope not. I'm, I, that's probably, he's probably not dumb. He's probably not going to go back no, over I'm there. Good. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm a little um, busy right now. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Make sure to uh, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for more. If you know these guys and you know their music, please uh, jump over to Patreon and drop uh, your song request for these guys in our new uh, chat that we built. Over yeah, we there. have a chat room specifically for song requests, so definitely put them over there for us. Yeah, and we're also giving seven days away for free and 15% discount when you pay up front for the year. Plus, there's a ton of exclusive content on there only for Patreons, and you guys get to enter into all the polls, the rest raffles over there to have your song request uh, chosen. But with that being said, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the love and support. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.